What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Icy. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we spend a little bit of time walking on, walking on broken ice, I guess. I'm sure we've walked across at least one frozen lake at this point, right? It's a stereotype. If you're in a white wasteland of snow, you have to walk across at least one lake that's frozen. And then somebody got to fall through the ice, you'd be like, no, don't lose the horses. And then, never mind, we're not going to worry about it. We need to ask about, so the last thing we did, we asked about the wolf pack. You don't really seem to like Morgan. He was so secretive about this mission, he gave us no info and sent us into certain death, and for what? If I'd known that we would've had to fight against a giant mutant tree, I would've brought something to burn it down. So no, I don't really like Morgan. Screw him and screw his fucking secrets. Hopefully I'll never have to deal with that bastard ever again. Alright, well, how many people were with you? We were nine, and now there's only two of us. We lost our friends, our family, we have nothing now. They were people. or there were people I liked and people I didn't, but I never wanted to see any of them dead. Yeah, I think I'll even miss that annoying prick of a Devon. The group prepares to travel while April still solemnly grieves her dead husband. It seems impossible to talk with her right now. You pack your things and go back into the White Wasteland. Next stop, the Ammo Nation. Hooray, back to the Ammo Nation. Can I scavenge this yet? How long do you have to wait to scavenge things a second time? Yes, we found it. Yay, we can scavenge this time around. So apparently it's like a day to two days before you can scavenge the same spot again. I'll probably just do that one. That seems to be cool. You managed to search part of the building, but the path ahead of you is collapsed, and it seems to be dangerous to proceed. Use ropeses. Yay! Ropeses successfuls! And so we got some electrical parts, and then three fuels so that we don't have to worry about finding shelter for another couple days. Huzzah for us! So we need to go back to the local tavern, and walk past the strippers and their polka music, and we needed to talk to the bartender. You finally came back. I was starting to get worried. Morgan is sitting with a glass of alcohol in his hands. It looks like somebody has a gun to his head. Although I think it's an upside down AK, so never mind them. But when I first saw it, it looks, it looks like he's being coerced into talking with us. And I'd be like, well, then why did I have to buy the liquor if we've already got a gun to his head? Like, we could have just asked questions anyways. You asshole, my whole family got killed in that thing. You sent us in there to die. Whoa, calm your tits. People that talk to me like that don't stay alive for long. He points at the guards spread all around the club. All of them are looking at Tanya. Tanya looks around and then she tries to contain her rage. You sent us to die. You refuse to tell us anything about the place. And the reason is quite simple. If I have to rely on you nomads instead of using my men, it's because I want to keep the thing secret to some people. People living around here. So if I were able to tell more about the job, I wouldn't have needed you for the job. No job, no reward. And you would still be looking for somebody to tell you what you need to know. Tanya turns to you. You talk with this idiot, otherwise things are going to end badly. She walks away and takes the stairs to leave. Morgan is now looking at you. So, will you tell me what happened in there? Everyone you sent in there got killed by the tree, which appears to be some kind of mutant which can move its roots and absorb people into itself. Morgan looks at you with his eyes wide open. Well, that is some fucked up stuff. Do you think that it'd be possible- Hey, you think it'd be possible to study the tree without getting people killed? Ah, uh, it's impossible. The tree is deadly and it's inside a building that's about to collapse. You should give up. Morgan empties his glass before answering. Crap, that's something that I didn't want to hear. I mean, you saw the thing? If there's any chance to replicate that growth on other plants, somebody could produce a lot of food doing so. Anyways, you did your job and now you'll find reward. Here, take some bullets. I understand that it was more dangerous than I expected. Then, I'll tell you who the guy is who gave all that nice equipment to the wolf back. I think he's called Boris, and I think I know where you can find him. Let me show you the place on your map. Here. The guy lives hidden in another- or the guy- the guy lives hidden into the nothingness around this place. You'll need to find a farmhouse painted in red. Don't go there hoping to find the same stuff that he gave to the wolf pack. He's smart, and the only time I met him, he had nothing with him. That's all. If you excuse me, there are people I need to speak to. For the first time, you see Morgan standing on his feet while he walks away. Let's go find Tanya. She'd like to know about what he said. You go out of the dungeon and see Tanya walking towards you. Did he tell you something useful? Yeah, he did. We have the location of a man who can lead us to the wolf pack. Would you mind if TJ and I join you on this journey? We have the same goal and we'll accept you as a leader as tradition dictates. Please, think about it before answering. We're only two. We can't survive on our own, but we can help you. We've been through a lot. Oh yeah, you could say that we're experienced in the art of surviving on the White Wasteland. Sure. I lost one, so I gotta at least like Annie up a little bit. If we could turn one into two, it's kind of like a reverse. I think it's like a reverse Spice Girl situation because they have like, When you make a you know that song. Anyways, it's gonna be like when one become two. So we traded Carlos out for two less argumentative and possibly more badass people. Though I will miss him fighting with people all the time. Although he was kind of racist too. Maybe not. Maybe I won't miss him. Anyways, you can join us. Thank you very much. Those bastards don't know what hit him. 
let's... Can I talk to a dancer first? We're already here. I mean, why not? She looks healthy. She appears to have some kind of problem with her right eye. I had to swap it around from her perspective. We may need to get her to a doctor. She might need antihistamines. She looks like she's having an allergic reaction to something. Either that or she's blowing a fat cloud. She just hit that bong. Anyways, as soon as the dancer sees you walking in her direction, she immediately approaches and greets you. Hi, sweetie. Can I ask you some questions? Only if you're willing to pay a bullet for the answers. Sure, why not? Where do you put the bullet? Seems a little bit heavy, though. Like, they don't have any, like, singles. You can trade bullets for maybe, like, little pieces of paper or script or something. Like, how do you get a bullet into a thong? It seems like it'd be difficult. I don't know. It's gonna fall right out. It's gonna clackety-clackety-clack all across their little laminated tables. Causing problems. Maybe if it lands wrong, a bullet's gonna fire in a direction. Like, ah! Shoot somebody in the head on accident. And this guy seems like he's a mafioso asshole. So then he's gonna hold us. Probably make us do all kinds of unsavory things if he doesn't do unsavory things to us. I'm just thinking about the long-term repercussions here. I'd like to know more about you, said nobody ever to a stripper. Let's walk away. <laughs> I'd like to know more about you and the daddy issues that led you to be in this place. Let's go back to the plaza. And we need to go to the trader's booth real fast. And in going to the booth, I needed to buy some things. We've got a couple of ropes, a couple of grapples. That's fine. I could probably use another torch, so I'll probably buy two of those real fast. Because we used up our only torch when we went into the last location. If we hadn't had it, I don't know what would have happened. I didn't know we were going to lose Carlos, to be honest. A little bit weird right there. Kind of sucks that there's no way to save him, but I guess maybe it would have played out differently depending on our choices. Like, maybe she hadn't broke her leg. They would have both made it out. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no lock picks either, so I should probably grab those. I'll take your lock. Why does everybody have burglary tools in the apocalypse? Like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, burglary tools. Those are over there on the left-hand side next to the bear traps. And thousands of firearms, which makes sense being here because this place is called the Ammo Nation. I could buy an SMG shaking my gun. That's basically every time I talk to somebody on Instant Messenger, like I get up on AOL Instant Messenger sometimes because I'm old-fashioned like that. It's like, big -a -dook. Send people some messages. Shaking my gun is the emoticon that I like to use the best. Somebody's like, ah, I need to go to the store. And I'm like, ah, it's too late. Shaking my gun. I find that shaking my gun at people really sort of just makes them abandon any plans they had with me. Hey, can you come over this weekend for my birthday? Nah, I can't make it. Shaking my gun. <laughs> they don't question it much. They'd be like, oh, he's shaking his gun again. Whatever. It could be worse. There are other things I could shake at you. I mean, like, no, no, shake the gun. Shake the gun. It's fine. I don't know what I want from here. We have enough food. We have enough fuel. We have, like, 50 million tons of medical supplies. So I figure I'll probably get rid of some of those. Make a little bit of extra cash. Deal or no deal? What's in the case? Nothing, because there's no case here. That game is, like, stupidly fun to play at the arcade. That big stand-up thing. My girlfriend is a big, big fan. Like, I can't take her to Scandia. We have to play deal or no deal if I go there. It's basically a given. I am really bad, though. She's good at it. I'm terrible, so what I've learned is I should never go on a game shop. i like, I bet it's number 16, because she's the prettiest one holding a case. And so I just be like, meh. I wonder if there's some psychology to that. Like, they actually, somehow, internally, they grade all the different models that hold the cases, and then the ones that get the highest scores are, like, the most frequently chosen by men or something. I don't know. I feel like I'm being mentally manipulated. I'm going to scavenge this building. I'm going to use a rope and grapple. Why not? Because I have an extra grapple and an extra rope. We found some fur on the floor and one bullet. Well, that wasn't worth the exchange. That wasn't worth it at all. Let's slide on by. We need to go into here and get some food, by the way. You suddenly spot some smoke from the distance and decide to see what happened. Okay, so it's the nomads that got attacked. I will give them the Medicine. There it is, because we're about to hit one of these things over here. If I hit this building, we shall skawenge it. And then it's a factory. We're going right there. I'll probably, let's just climb. You managed to reach the upper floor. Hooray! The building is collapsing. You have to get out. Run away from danger! You managed to get out without being, wow, we got a big hall right there. Uh-huh. Alright, so we got a hammer, we got a crowbar, we got a rope, and we got some electrical parts. And we got some fuel. So that's pretty fun. I like fuel. Fuel sounds like a really fancy food that you would get at a place that serves like baklava or something. I don't know. Sounds like the sort of food you would get. Like, mm, we need to go downtown for fuel. I'll probably take a long ass time to gather food and medicine because we could use it. I feel like that yield wasn't what I expected, but you know what? I'm going to go into the forest for a little bit and I bet we can hunt. Oh, we can't. That's disappointing. I wish we could hunt better. Hmm. I am disappointed with our yields. Let's quickly scavenge the small town. After looting, or after looting the few interesting items you managed to find at the village, you see a derelict apartment complex. Its stairs are totally destroyed. 
I will use a grapple. You successfully get to the upper floors and explore the building. We got, what is that, a sewing kit? If you don't want holes in your clothes, and nobody does, it's really cold out here. And then we also got some playing cards. 36 bullets, 7 medication, and then an extra fuel. That's pretty cool. Take everything. Because I want it. And then we'll go down to this little push pin right here. I like pull pins better, but you know what? If all you have is a push pin, I guess it works. You feel relieved when you finally spot a Fred farmhouse not too far from you. You proceed towards the building with your weapons ready to react to any threat, but nothing happens while you advance. You start hearing strange noises like some kind of machinery. It's coming from inside, and as you get closer, you see that the door is partially open. Strange noises in a strange place. I hope we don't get into a fight. I'm tired of that. You slowly open the door. It appears to be some kind of laboratory surrounded by machines, the likes of which you've never seen. You have no clue as to their purpose. A man appears from the dark side of the room. Visitors! Before you make any rash decisions, you should know that the entire place is rigged with explosives. Those explosives are connected to a device that scans my heartbeat. In short, you heard her kill me, the entire place explodes, and we're all dead. So, if you want to, he suddenly stops talking when he locks eyes on you. In that same moment, the man seems familiar to you, like you know him from a long time ago. You? Where the hell did you disappear off to? Suddenly, something happens in your head. You start to remember your past. You know this man. His name is Boris, and you used to travel with him. But not like nomads. You came from a different place, a place that is slowly coming back to you. You remember a room with metal walls and electrical lights. You see yourself holding an assault rifle, and you remember talking with Boris. I'm growing tired of this. We're sent out into the frozen wastelands while the others stay here in the safety of the Eden with heat and food. This is the last run we're doing. If they want to get resources from the outer world, they'll have to open the gates. There was a woman, too, talking with you and Boris. Yeah, but what will the people around here do if they discover that their legend of the Eden is real? The Eden. Nothing but a bunker created for long-term survival. And we'll keep surviving by keeping the dangerous people out while trading with the decent ones like we always have. If it were not only that easy, should the world discover this place, we'll have hordes of people swarming to get in, even if it's not exactly like the old legends say. You suddenly realize that you lived most of your life inside the Eden, and you were one of the people sent outside to gather additional supplies. There was an incident, and you lost your memory. Then Jerome found you out in the snow and allowed you to trap- That's so, like, cryptic, though. I feel like, given the attention they've given the storyline so far, they could have filled that in some other way, other than just, like, sort of, like, springing it on you. Like, you walk around a corner, like, oh, you remember! Welcome back to your memories. Your mind returns to the present. Boris is looking at you, clearly not knowing what to do. Where have you been? What the hell happened to you? I got caught in a snow slide. I'm gonna go with that one because it has the most storyline. I got caught in a snow slide and I lost my memory. Jerome, this guy over here, saved me and I've traveled all around the world with him. I thought you died with Claire that day and now you show up in my hideout with these people. If you don't remember, why are you here? Yeah, why don't you tell them all we're here? You took our friends, helped by some mercenaries we've been following since that day. Me? I rarely deal with outsiders like you. I sincerely doubt that I took anybody's friends. You sent the wolf back. You deal with them, a mercenary group that kidnapped our friends after testing their blood. Wait, are you telling me they're kidnapping people? Boris looks actually surprised at what you said. There's something you must know, and I'm telling you this because I could use some help from an old friend. What do you remember from our home? Do you remember that there were people there who wanted to open it to the external world? I'm one of them, and the situation is critical. The Eden is running short on critical supplies, and they're starting to take them from the external world by any means necessary. We want to open the Eden to the world, establishing a trading post that would allow us trade for what we need. But our leaders don't follow the line of thought. Do you want to know why our friends were kidnapped? You need to... We need someone of a certain blood type in Eden to be able to have blood for anyone in case of emergencies. It's true, I'm the one who provides the equipment to the wolf pack, but I'm not the one that gives them orders. I'm not the only outside agent Eden has. I'm working outside because we, the ones who want Eden open, need somebody that can work in the external world. Now I have something to ask of you, but before I do, do you have any questions about what I've told you? I, why do you want it? Well, we already get that. I mean, it's easier to trade than it is to go to war with everybody. Sooner or later, your enemies are going to outnumber your allies. If you're going to constantly wage war on your neighbors, it's not going to make you friendly. It's not going to put you in a good situation with others. What about your leaders? They fear the external world. They don't fully realize how things work outside the Eden and how bad people are living in it compared to what we could achieve by opening it. It's a legitimate fear, but we can't keep watching the shelter fall into pieces. We need supplies to keep the Eden working, and we can't rely on a few outside agents. We were friends before I disappeared? Sure, or at least I always thought so. We worked together, the three of us, and the dangers of this world forced strong bonds between us. I still remember the day I waited for you and Claire to show up. I remember how worried I was, and then when I was searching for you, how desperate I was. Boris smiles. It's kind of good to know that you're still alive. 
What resources are lacking? Lots of stuff. You must know that our ancestors had food with a long shelf life to sustain them. When those resources ran out, it started the first crisis inside the bunker. The Eden was not created for such an extended period of survival. More than a hundred years have passed since the day the world went away, and things eventually started to break down. Our life is getting worse with each passing day, and that's why our leaders started to send people outside, like you and me, to find replacements for what didn't work anymore. Okay, so I don't really have any more questions. I know what the Eden is. I mean, we'll figure out more. Good. I hope you fully understand how dire the current situation is. Now I have something to ask of you. I hope you will accept. The Wolfpack is the most reliable group of mercenaries that the outside agents have been able to find. They're good, but extreme, as you've seen. I need you to make them disappear. Kill them if you need to, but not right now. Don't worry, I'll help you as much as I can. I'll lead you to the Eden so you will be able to get some equipment. Once there, you'll volunteer for your old job again. The leaders have eyes and ears everywhere, so keep quiet about all the opening of the Eden stuff. You'll see with your own eyes soon enough what's happening in there. Let me show you on your map. You need to go here. He points his finger at an area south of your current position. You'll see a big warehouse. Wait for me there. I'll come as soon as I can. I need to dismantle this place and hide all the equipment. Clearly, my hideout is not safe. Not anymore. Go now. I have a horse so I can travel faster than you, so let me dispose of everything and catch up to you when I can. Boris leads you to the door, and before closing it says, Good luck. You're outside with everybody looking at you. It seems that everyone is wanting to say something, but nobody wants to be the first to talk. Jerome finally speaks up. So, you came from Eden. Your old friend will help us find your other friends. Everything's getting too complicated for me. Legend is true. Can you imagine it? The Eden, a place in which you're protected from everything. The whole story is unfolding before our eyes, but it's still unclear how it's going to end. I don't really care. He'll help us find the wolf pack, and that's the only thing I wanted to hear. We'll discuss it during the journey. We've got a lot of walking to do to get there. Everyone puts their backpacks on, and you start traveling south, hoping to find more answers and some much-needed help. Alright, so how far south are they talking? Okay, not that far. I think we should probably hit this building. We should probably hit the forest and also that little outcropping of plants down here along the way. So we'll get that and this and also the forest to try and stock up. It's an old farm. Let's scavenge. You start exploring the building and gather useful items when you see some stairs that go to a dark basement. Let's use a torch. We explore it easily. So we found a grappling hook. We found two bullets, three fuel, and three medicine. Not the best take we could have hoped for, but it's something. I'm going to try and get out here into the forest before I hunt. There we go. You're in a dark area of the forest? Good, that's where I wanted to be. We will do six hours right there. We'll use arrows to kill the boars. And then the boar is going to attack a friend. We'll shoot it in the face. We'll take the 16 food and all of the furs for trade fodder. After that, we're going to go to this little spot right here and hunt even further, unless it won't let me... Huh, they appear to be connected, I guess. Weird. You're walking when you stumble on a solid object and fall to the ground. It's a wooden box and you find a lot of medicine. It's probably a secret cache left by nomads. Yeah, take it all. It'll be fine. 20 medicines for us. Yay! All of the medicines inside of my pack pack. If we go hungry, we will then do all of the drugs. We'll go out with a smile on our face. Let's jump inside this building right here and see what happens. You reach the warehouse that Boris mentioned to you. It seems to be safe and there's no one around. Okay, we finally arrived. I think we need to discuss what happened and what'll happen next. I mean, what are we up to? Are we going to work for the Eden? Will we ever have the chance to live in it? Well, we need our friends back and everything else is secondary. We can say it's a great opportunity. We could play along for now. An open Eden is the answer. Well, let's focus on our friends. I think that's going to be the one that inspires the most confidence. You want everybody to think you're not going to leave them behind and that you're not going to sell them out for the first best deal that comes along. All we need to do is get back our friends. Everything else is secondary. Don't forget about the wolf pack. I want my revenge to be honest. I want to get some of their stuff too. I can live in the white wasteland if I have weapons and high-tech devices. Trust me, nothing is going to make me forget about getting revenge. It's, no, it's the right thing to do. They took something from you too, your friends and your former lover. Sure, but I'm not that eager to run into danger. Right now, I'm more inclined to worry about my survival and the fact that we've just discovered that the Eden is real. I don't want to seem insensitive, but all this stuff about the Eden may be a great opportunity for all of us. Despite what they did, this may be our way to improve our lives. It doesn't really matter what path we'll follow for now. All of them lead to the Eden and its future on this land. Demetra's right. To save our friends, we'll have to deal with this situation anyways. Can you imagine living inside the Eden? Could we really achieve something like that? Fact is, the situation is a big deal. You heard your old friend. There is dissent in the Eden, and just like we found out that it exists, others can too. I actually never heard of this place, but according to what you say, it seems too good to be real. Well, the Vale could turn into a battlefield if things don't get handled with care. It's not hard to imagine the whole Ammo Nation coming in here to conquer the Eden.
All right, so... I definitely think we should probably keep it a secret for right now. What you've got is sort of a terrible situation where... I would be like, look at North Korea and South Korea. You've got, like, a country full of starving people that are really, really desperate. And if you topple... I'm going to corroborate telling the secret to sort of toppling a government. They're going to flood into whatever areas they can in order to find refugee help and things like that. I think the exact same thing would happen here if you all of a sudden just spread the news that the Eden is real. They're not going to have time to set up their trading infrastructure and get ready for the flood that's coming if you just blab it to everybody. So I think we need to hold the secret for right now until the Eden is ready, and then we let the hordes in, you know what I mean? The best thing to do is to keep this thing secret as long as possible. Even if the Eden opens to the world, it'll take time to be able to manage a lot of travelers. I agree. The Vale is an isolated area. It's the perfect place to try and establish an alliance between the people of the Vale and the ones from the Eden. I'm just too old to keep living on the edge. Finally having a place to peacefully age and then die could really cheer me up. Man, you're the only person i ever seen that talk about dying and you got a smile on your face. My age, the last thing I want to witness is a war. I wouldn't survive to see the end of it, I'm sure of that. You hear the sound of a horse getting near your position. After a couple seconds, you see Boris on his horse coming towards you. Sorry I'm late, so are you ready to go back to your home? I'm eager to see the place. I don't remember much, but if it's like if it's something wait. But it's like it is something I missed for a long time. Good. Your companions may follow us, but I need them to hide when we enter into the Eden. There's a cave. They could wait for you there. Just remember to say nothing about what I told you regarding all that stuff relating to the opening of Eden into the world. The leaders have eyes and ears pretty much everywhere, he said right outside their front door. Come on, let's go. There's some old friends that'll be happy to see your face again. Boris starts leading your group towards the Eden while you feel nervous and you wonder what will happen. So we gotta go to the Eden now. I guess this isn't the spot. So I'm gonna scavenge real fast. We find a chest. I'm gonna open it. The building is collapsing. We're gonna run away from the danger. We found... Damn! We found a big ass, like, I guess, python type gun. We got a crowbar. We got a rope. Cool. Take it all. And then I need to go to my inventory now that I'm a dude with a gun. And maybe... What does that gun do, by the way? Does it do anything cool? Is it useful? A nice revolver. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad to hear that he's been properly socialized. We can take... Eh, it's actually not that good. I mean, we do have a lot of guns and stuff right now, though. We got it locked down as far as guns are concerned. We are rolling in it. All right, well, I'm going to end the episode right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Icy. If you wanted to get the game, look down below. I will see you all later. Hi, do, everybody.